Welcome back aboard Arabella. This week, Steve finishes hooking up the propane stove properly, which involves, as usual, putting a few more holes in the boat. If you watched last week's video with Nigel Calder helping diagnose Arabella's electrical issues, the solution for that will be coming up in the next videos, so stay tuned, and thanks for liking and subscribing. But the main reason that we're able to bring you this story every week is because of the support you give us on Patreon. And if you're able to drop a few dollars once in a while, we'll try our best to make it count. So that's the inner harbor in Camden down there. We can see the little line of floats. And I don't know how this is going to show up, but there's Arabella. Just a couple boats left at the float. So currently we are on the summit of Mount Batty, the World War I Memorial. And it looks down in Camden Harbor in the bay. Over here, sweetie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on the propane, which oddly enough involves some electrical. So, in the rush to get launched, there was many things that didn't get finished or didn't get done quite right, and one of those was the propane. So, what we've been doing is manually going up on deck and shutting the propane on and off when we want to use the propane. That way, if there's some sort of propane leak, we can't fill the boat with propane and blow it up, which is what we want to try to avoid. But right now, Robin gets up before I do in the morning, and it is below freezing and sometimes raining, and it is gross. So going up on deck and opening up the propane locker and opening up the vent before you make your coffee in the morning is kind of a wicked bummer. And then we haven't had a good spot for the hose to come through. We've just left the metal door kind of ajar, which means that we've got a pretty significant draft coming through. Uh, and when the wind was blowing yesterday, this is so that eventually when things are finished, you'll be able to open this and cut a hole in the propane box and you'd be able to reach in and manually shut it off and be able to check the levels of the propane from inside. And what we've been having is the propane hose just kind of tucked in there and the door gently shut. So there's been a ton of cold air pouring in and this hose needs to get run and it needs to get put a, through a gland through the house side and into the propane locker. And then that way we can keep this shut. And you'll really only open this if you want to turn it off completely. And then this little doodad is the solenoid. So it's 12 volt DC. And how this works, there's a big spring in here and it shuts it on and off. So when you make the electrical connection, and you energize this with 12 volts of electricity, it opens up and it lets the propane or gasoline, whatever fuel you're using, flow through. And when you shut this off and you break it, that spring pushes down or up, however it goes, and blocks that off. So its default setting is shutting the propane off. Now we could not do this and run it through one of the breakers would be an option, but we have to remember to turn that breaker on and off when we want to turn the propane off. And the chances of us remembering to turn that off every time are pretty slim. And then that doesn't have a default setting where if we lose power or something funky happens, it just shuts off. So this solenoid gets mounted inside the propane locker. So we've got our pressure gauge We've got our regulator because we don't want it full tank pressure. We just want a couple PSI coming out, so that's what the regulator's for. And then we are going to add the solenoid, which needs to be wired up. And then that'll go to the propane, which will go through the bulkhead and into 
the boat. So I need to figure out how to get the wires from one of the breakers over here and hooked up to the positive and negative and then sent across the boat up into this region somewhere where our hose is going to come through and I need to go pick up a on and off switch for the propane that goes here. So I'm going to run down to Hamilton Marine and go see what they got. What I'm hoping to find is a very obnoxious bright light that when it is on it is like screaming, hey, I'm on, um, and hopefully one that's made for propane that's labeled propane. That would be ideal. And we can mount that here and then flip that on. It opens up the solenoid. You can do your cooking and the breaker isn't going to be shut on or off unless we really want to shut off the solenoid for some reason. The breaker is more that that's where we hook up to the electrical and we have a lot of empty breakers. So instead of ganging that up on something else or hardwiring that in, we might as well run it through one of the breakers. And that way when we leave the boat or something and we go through and we shut everything off, you know, shutting off that solenoid and making that so it can't get flipped on for some reason uh, will be a, kind of a fail safe. But what we'll use for day to day will be the one that we mount up here next to the solenoid. We've got a drill through the grab rail in the back corner here and we'll run that line through the corner and over and out. What we have been doing is just kind of having it tucked here which is less than ideal. Drilling holes in the boat. Look at that, clean up the breeze. I will be relieved to have this done. I have not really liked having the propane not hooked up totally properly. I kind of like the boat. I'd rather not explode it.
light on that bed for Tower is really pretty on the top of Batty. <laughs> yeah, literally just up there yesterday. Oh, it's such a nice walk. Yeah, it is. Betty, you want to come down? Oh, boy. Come on, the elevator. Come on. Come on. There you go. Oh, boy. I didn't realize that I can get a gas sniffer that works with the solenoid that I got with the Dickinson stove. So instead of wiring the solenoid up with the on and off switch, which we could do, and making sure that we turn it on and off, instead we can hook up to the propane sniffer, still have the on and off switch if we want, still be able to manually shut off the tank if we want, but we can leave the solenoid open and if the gas sniffer smells a gas leak it'll shut the solenoid off and as long as the gas sniffer doesn't smell any gas it'll leave the solenoid open and i think that is pretty cool and we don't have to worry quite so much about having the on and off switch and flipping it every day so before i finish up the propane install here we'll keep shutting it off manually every time we want to use it but i gotta pick up one of these gas sniffers and get that wired in with the solenoid. I think that's definitely the, definitely the way to go. And we've got our lines coming through. Our two electrical are off to the side of the gas. And the gas is run through. <coughs> and then if we need, well, whenever we want to use the propane at the moment, we open the door up and it's got a rubber seal, which I need to replace, but that seals up pretty well, and there's a still a good lip in here. So any propane should just drain overboard. That's its, that's its easiest path out of there by far. And we can reach right up and through. It's kind of tight, but we can get up there and we can shut the propane on and off without having to go up on deck, which is kind of nice when the weather's real crummy. The next big winter project would be getting the diesel heater up and running so that they would have reliable heat that could get them through the long cold nights. That involved another few trips to the hardware store. But that was when Steve's sister called him one morning with news that his mother's cancer had come back in force. Making the choice to move the boat south for the winter to be closer to where her treatments will be was the new priority. Steve's friend Stu came out for the day to help get the rig ready to sail. metal drum up at the yep. tip of the bowsprit. This is the bowsprit. Yep. The metal fitting that I had used from Victoria broke. And then that jib with the sail on it mm -hmm. came back. So to fix that, I had to loosen the whiskers, which are these wires on the side. Yep. The bob stay, which is the rod underneath. Mm -hmm. And the head stay, which is the wire that that big metal drum rides on. So what I need to do is there's a turnbuckle down here mm -hmm. and on the other side and then there's two turnbuckles up forward one yep. underneath the metal furler yep and then one underneath the bowsprit yep i see so i need to crank on all of those until everything is like really nice and tight but what i don't want to do is pull too far one way or up or down mm -hmm. and crank the bowsprit out of alignment yep and then i'll pull up the furler drum and we'll do the bob stay and the head stay. Okay. And then you're just my eyes that this stays straight. Yep. And then when I do the bob stay and the head stay, you can get over on the dock yep. and see if I start to pull it up or down. Okay. Oh, I forget the standards. 
that's okay. I personally like the single rope climbing technology and I've got a micro traction here that's self tending on one of the halyards. So if something happened for some reason with the line or the attachment point that I'm on, I would just fall onto this one. control itself without it doing what it wants to be doing. Yeah. like that and what you do is you hook it under and sweat it like we did with the uh, lines for pulling the boat yeah all right let's get this thing furled take this line and you're going to run it down the other side of the boat. Got a break from the cold and it's 50 degrees and sunny with no wind, which means I'm gonna go do a little climbing. We're not gonna get too many more of these. Nope, these days will be fleeting. It's beautiful out. We're almost there, buddy. Your island where you can run free. <laughs> Bye. This is why we don't let Akiva loose. Akiva! Akiva, come here! Akiva, come! <laughs> he belongs to the island now. Yeah, he's like, I'm out of here. All right. <laughs> what do you got, bud? Come on.
How's that cookie? Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Post ride salty chocolate chip cookie. Mm -hmm. It's heaven. <laughs>